Hello, this is the hardcore legend Mick Foley, and I know when I want to keep up with the latest in wrestling news from around the world, I check in with Dead on Dave Productions. He covers a wide variety of wrestling topics, including the career of the hardcore legend. Don't miss it. Dead on Productions. Yeah. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy, Dead on Dave, and I feel like absolute crap. I'm having a hard time sitting up today. Had some rough goings yesterday, so I'm not on camera today because I just can't sit upright. So we are here to do your NXT review, my favorite hour in all of wrestling each and every week. So I'm really excited about that, getting ready to watch it. And of course, we will do what we've been doing, and I will give you my unabashed live raw reaction to each and every single segment so let's get this thing started nxt who's excited i am let's do it about seven and a half minutes in finn balor versus ty dillinger uh quick solid match not very long ty dillinger got a little bit of offense in until finn balor took complete control getting the victory uh, here's my thing. I I'm completely okay with uh, Finn getting victories like this, especially since after they set it up with Tyler Breeze getting involved uh, on Titantron, whatever the Titantron, the big screen, uh, and basically starting a feud. You know, uh, that's kind of cool. I like the fact that a new feud is is in the works for Finn Balor, and he should work well with Tyler Breeze. My only worry, and this is a small critique to Finn Balor, and, and, and this is the first time I've even critiqued him at all, is I feel that his matches, especially with guys who are not top end dudes, and I, I know that, that this is kind of the norm, they get a little formulaic, especially towards the end. I'm not the biggest fan of having a more than two move setup for a finisher. And that's what he has. He has a three-move situation. He's got the sling blade, which then the guy goes into a position to get drop kicked into the corner, and then he rolls himself into position for a coup de gras. I don't like that when each time it's going to be two moves that has the opponent put themselves in into a position, you know what I mean? Because it, it, after you see it 40 or 50 times, which you're going to, it's going to start feeling like, damn, man. I, I just, so I'm, I'm worrying that that could become a problem. Now, the coup de gras is such a cool finishing move. The double stomp off the top rope is, is really cool and everything. But it just, it worries me that his matches might get formulaic somewhere down the road. Now, it's possible that they won't at all. Uh, but it's just something to keep in mind. We'll see how it goes with Prince Pretty, Tyler Breeze, and we'll see what type of finishes he has. But it's just something that I'm keeping my mind on because I'm in it. Well, I'm a douche, and I think about these things. I think about wrestling way more than a normal man should. There is no question about that. But bottom line is I really, really like Finn Balor. I like his look. I like the way he works. I'm just worried about the possibility of things getting a little formulaic down the line. Uh, I'm very happy about seeing, wow, my wife just walked in with straight hair and it blew my head off. Holy crap. Looks nice. Thank you. Very nice. Thank you. You're welcome. You look like a different person. Uh, <laughs> that's pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> so, crap. What was I saying? Oh, uh, I like the Tyler Breeze feud. Uh, hopefully that'll be a lot of fun. And give us a lot of moments to watch in the future. Let's go ahead and get back to the action. I believe we're about to see a Dana Brooke promo. Um, eight minutes and 30 seconds in. And yes, we got a uh, Dana Brooke promo. That was weird. <laughs> uh, you know, it wasn't too bad. Her delivery was fine. Uh, it didn't make any sense. She said... This is Dana Brooks' playground, and playtime is over. So, does that mean that she's leaving the company? I don't, I don't understand what that means. She's not going to wrestle again. If it's her playground, then playtime should be in session, right? Maybe I'm stupid. 
I don't know. It's quite possible. I could be an idiot. Not the first time I've been accused of it. That was just weird. This is my playground and playtime is over. Who wants to leave their playground? I, I, don't, I don't understand. Why would you want playtime to be over if this is your playground? This is where you play. I don't know. That was weird. Uh, well, <laughs> Dana Brooke, like her or hate her? What do you guys think? Uh, she had a lackluster debut match. She hit a nice, a really nice finisher. But she can't really talk very well yet. She's, she's green. She's super, super green. We'll see where she goes. What do you guys think of Dana Brooke? I don't know. She definitely has a captivating factor about her. But, you know, it is... It is an interesting thing she's doing. Playtime is over. I don't. Uh, if it's your playground, I don't. I don't understand. I'm confused. Very confused. All right, back to NXT. Oi. Nine and a half minutes in, and we got another promo. This time by the NXT champion Kevin Owens. Dear Dana Brooke. Take a page out of what Kevin Owens just did. That is how you deliver a promo. It was a little bizarre. It was calculated. It was perfectly executed. This guy is awesome. And he kind of and he took shots at Devin too, which is kind of cool. Who I, I like Devin, but you know, the fucker. Uh, <laughs> So I, I'm, I'm loving this. I'm absolutely loving what he's doing. That was a great promo by him. Oh, by the way, if you haven't noticed, we have the trivia ticker up in the top in yellow. If you answer the trivia questions, honestly, and it was just look, it's, uh, I made some of these hard. There are four questions up there. Every single episode, there'll be four new questions with points of two, five, seven, and ten. Put your point total down in the bottom below. And, you know... I know you can't get all four of these without looking them up. Maybe there is one special person. So the only way that I can make sure that you guys are being honest is if the high point score I bring on the Sunday show that on Dave live and ask my own questions there live where you can't look up. And if you get that question correct, if you get the special question correct, that you can earn the right to do that. If you do and you get it correct and you get five minutes of rant time uninterrupted rant time as long as you don't do anything hate hate speech or stupid or anything like that you can have five minutes on dead on dave live sunday 1 to 3 p.m eastern standard time i will give you five minutes to talk about whatever your heart desires okay so stay honest answer these questions as best as you can and you might win yourself a shot all right so now with that let's get back to nxt Okay, 22 minutes in, and we just saw the triple threat uh, women's match on NXT for the number one contendership to the title currently held by Sasha Banks. This was Charlotte, Bailey, and Becky Lynch. Great match. Absolutely great match. I do not have a problem with the match. The finish makes no sense, and I have a problem with it. And I'll tell you why. Historically, you go through time, and with Ric Flair in particular, with the figure four, when if a competitor's shoulders is on the mat, the ref is supposed to count to three, and it, is the, and it would be the person who has the hold on that gets the finish. Now, just because Becky Lynch put her arm over, if anything, it should be a, you know, a... Uh, both of them won, and Becky definitely lost, and it should like be a one-on-one -on -one encounter between Becky, Lynch, and Charlotte. But Charlotte had the hold locked in that caused her to have the, the her pin, her shoulders to the mat for a three count. So that doesn't make any sense. The historically, we historically we have seen people get pinned just by resting, resting, and, not, and keep their shoulders going to the mat against Ric Flair and getting pinned. We've seen it happen. I, I've seen it. I've seen matches happen. I believe Sting and, and, and Ric Flair have ended that way before. Uh, I know it's happened. I've seen it. So this is a little confusing that the booking has been one of the strongest parts of NXT. I'm kind of surprised they would allow the finish to go down like this and have Becky be the undisputed winner of this match. 
I don't understand that. That's confusing, and it doesn't seem to have good continuity with the uh, whole NXT experience. So, I don't know. I'm probably just being picky. I have no problems with Becky Lynch winning this match. In fact, I'm excited to see her and Sasha uh, go at it. I think Becky is probably one of the most improved performers, man or woman, I have seen in a very long time. From where I started when I watched her to where she is right now, it's completely, it's night and day. This woman is so talented, and uh, I really like her a lot. She is very complete. She's hard-hitting. She's got a great look. Uh, she does a lot of things well. Reminds me of Lita in a lot of ways, not just because of the red hair. I just think that she's very dynamic. I like her a lot. So I want I definitely want to see more out of her. Uh, I'm just a little disappointed in how they booked the, the finish. But, again, that could be just me being completely friggin' picky. I don't know. What do you guys think of the finish? And am I right? Or Look, I could be wrong here. I'm almost 100% sure that I am not wrong and that the fall should have at least half gone to Charlotte. But if there is a scenario that you guys have seen in the past that points to where I'm wrong, please let me know. I've never seen something like that happen before to where somebody else got to finish. I know if Becky would have put her in like a uh, a cross face or an arm bar or something, they both would have gotten the fall had, ba had Bailey submitted. It's just very weird. Now, let me know if I'm wrong. Put it in the comment section below. Or tweet me at my Twitter, at DeadOnDayV. Make sure you follow me there as well. You can also put any comments that you have right on Facebook, forward slash, you know, Facebook, blah, 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 forward slash this guy's take on it. All of my contact information and show information times, everything is on the blue ticker. You see blue lettering underneath the, it's currently the Daily Focus Sign now, it's between the ropes. That is all my promos. That's all my shows, all my friends' shows, people that are, pro are promoting the show, sponsors. They all go right there. Underneath that, you will see the blue ticker that has all of the channel information as well as contact information. If you want your channel, if you want your channel uh, promoted right here, contact me and we'll discuss terms. All right? Uh, so just let me know. Back to NXT. Here we go. 29 and a half minutes in CJ Parker versus the returning Hideo Itami. First time we've seen him since WrestleMania. Uh, I keep thinking CJ Parker's last match has got to be coming up, but yet nah, he, he wrestled at every friggin taping match. It seemed like, and uh, now this one, it is him and Hideo Itami. You know what? CJ Parker is, is has shown in the last couple of matches why he's going to be missed. Because he is a very serviceable wrestler. He's very good. He, he's solid at making someone look much better. That's his biggest strength. Unfortunately, that's really his only strength. And, you know, the, it's you've been there four years. It's time to move on. Hideo looked very good getting the offense in at the end of the match. And, you know, going in and hitting his big moves. Um, I'm still hoping that they decide to let him use the GTS more often. God, Hideo kicks so hard. Uh, he didn't really hit the shotgun kick very well. Decent match, not a mind blower. We really haven't had that super solid blow you away match that we're used to getting on NXT. I mean, the triple threat match was very good, but it certainly wasn't a mind blower. So hopefully Alex Riley and Kevin Owens will be that match. We'll see. Let's go ahead and get back to the action of NXT. A little more than 30 minutes in. Very interesting backstage promo between Becky Lynch and the boss, Sasha Banks. Kind of funny. Kind of funny going back and forth at each other with Becky Lynch telling her, I don't know how to tell you this, but I'm kind of a big deal. Oh, my God. You, you got to always love a Ron Burgundy line. That's fantastic. I'm kind of a big deal. I love that. Uh, Sasha responding very well. She's so good at what she does. Uh, these two should have a great program together. I'm exciting seeing them go at it. It's something a little bit new too, which is good. Uh, seeing different matchups in the women's division is always fun. They don't keep the same thing going all the time. I don't know if this is going to turn into a serious long-term rivalry, but it easily could. So we'll see what happens there. I think that it's going to get bigger and better and hopefully culminate at a match at one of these NXT special 
events and uh, really just take it over the top. I think these two have such good chemistry together that we could see a hell of a rivalry. So let's see where it goes. Back to NXT. 32 minutes in. They're hitting uh, segments hot and heavy right now. We got Rhino versus some Jamoke. I have no idea who this guy is. Uh, he, he looks like a emo villain. I have no idea what's up with this dude. He's got a terrible haircut. Didn't, ma didn't matter. Didn't last long. Rhino makes short work of him because that's what Rhino does. I love the fact that Rhino is still having matches. I love the you still got it, never lost it chance that we were hearing during this match, or at the end of it, I should say. Great matchup uh, just because it's fun seeing Rhino. I, I, I love seeing Rhino hit the gore on people. I absolutely love it. I don't care that he's 39. It's fun. It's fun. It doesn't need to be on WWE. It works on NXT. So I have no problems with it. I think he's there to kind of show guys like Baron Corbin exactly how to do the squash match because they have guys who are very similar to Rhino as far as how they're going to want them to work. So why not watch the master, somebody who's squashed people in, in beautiful ways for years, Rhino. So I think that's probably his overall purpose and drag some of these younger kids like he did with Sami Zayn last week into deeper water. Rhino doesn't always have to win. He showed it when he when he dropped to Sami Zayn. So I have no problems with Rhino being down there. I think he's doing great work. And he's got limitless potential as far as who he can wrestle with. And if the WWE does want to bring him up, they always have that option. They always have an option. So let's check out this promo. It looks like Carmella is in this promo. Let's check this out. <laughs> 33 and a half minutes in. <laughs> yes, Carmella was getting serenaded, I guess, by Blake and Murphy, the tag team champions. When, of course, my boys, Big Cass and Enzo More come in. And Enzo with the great lines such as, Do you smell the halitosis up in here? And uh, never put those two in the same breath as Sinatra. Oh my God, it was great. And they were arguing with Carmelo because she was wearing the diamonds and everything that Blake and Murphy bought her previously. And <laughs> she said, you don't buy me these type of things. You don't where, where's my necklace. And Enzo, as it was going out back to the ring, you hear Enzo say, I don't need to get you a necklace. I got you a job. That was great. Oh my God. He's fantastic. I love Enzo more. I just let this guy talk. I got you a job. It's fantastic. Oh, my God. Uh, main event time. <laughs> main event time. Rage Riley Rage versus Fight Owens. Fight. Should be a good match. Looks like they're leaving in about 10 minutes. So we'll see what happens. Uh, should be a good little match. Hopefully it'll be the epic encounter that this night needs it's been a solid night of nxt action solid but it needs a cap let's see if riley and owens can put the cap on a good show 40 minutes in almost 41 minutes in and they only gave the match six minutes not even really more closer to five maybe four and a half uh, riley got some offense in mainly controlled by owens uh, who did some of his slow tactics and then Got all of his major offense and wins with a pop-up power bomb rather convincingly. And uh, well, there's still some time left, so obviously something else is going to happen. But why didn't we get a bigger match for the main event? This card did not have one solid epic 12, 13 minute match, which I guess it didn't really need because so much has happened during this show. So I'm okay with that. Uh, well, let's see what let's see how the the mat the night ends because it feels like something's missing here end of the night and yes there was something missing there was something that needed to happen and of course kevin owens was about to put alex riley onto the side of the ring apron with the power bomb and who was to make the save other than Sami Zayn? Sami Zayn comes out and they start brawling the entire nxt locker room comes up tries to separate them it does not work Zayn will not be denied and as they have kevin owens held down held up uh, outside of the ring in the corner what does Sami Zayn do? He goes to the top rope and splashes all of them with a senton bomb. Very nice 
closing segment and gave the show kind of that stamp that it needed, that little extra juice, because people want to see Zayn and Owens again. That first match was great, but we want to see more of it. We want to see more out of these two. I think we will get that very soon. Should be a lot of fun. What did you think of tonight, NXT? I liked it quite a bit. In fact, I'm going to give NXT a seven and a half. I thought it was very good. It was missing a little bit more in-ring action, like as far as like there was a lot of matches, but they were all kind of short. Maybe they were kind of preparing them for their WWE careers where the matches are not always featured uh, because they do do that on NXT a lot where they give guys a little extra time, but that's not always going to be reality when they get called up to the main roster. So maybe that's kind of what this was. A situation, uh, a show that they could book them in a different way, which is something they do often at NXT, is they book the shows differently all the time. So it's never stagnant. They're getting different ways of working, different ways of being booked. And if that's how it is, if that is the reality, then it's absolutely brilliant on WWE's part because that's what you want to do. It's what you have to do to get these guys ready properly. So there you have it. The Dead on Day production NXT review. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Make sure you uh, check out the trivia questions in yellow, of course, and all of the channel information and show information in the blue ticker. And if you want your show, your channel, your band, your product, whatever, promoted right here during my shows, go ahead and hit me up on Twitter at that on Day V. On Skype, David Vancura, D-A-V-I-D-V-A-N-C-U-R-A. Uh, on Facebook, forward slash this guy's take on it. Or on Google Plus. Or right here in the comment section below. If you want your stuff advertised, let me know and we will make that happen. Other than that, thank you guys for joining me. As always, like, subscribe, and share. And remember, kids, if you don't have if you don't have talent, have talented friends. We'll see you next time. Peace.